Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of FS Passengers with me, Amir37. So we're up here in Homer, Alaska. That nice Orbex scenery. And in this flight, we actually have a really short one. Uh, we're going to go to Kenai, which is, uh, I believe, just north. It's less than 100 miles. And uh, I've got senior for that, and I think that might actually be it for the scenery that we have for Alaska. I'm not sure. I'll, ch I'll have to check on that. We'll go up to FS Passengers and get this thing going. All right, there we go. Eight passengers, waiting as 80% of the aircraft. All right, I think that's correct. All eight. Then it's uh, me and the co-pilot, the other two. Uh, this is a very short flight, like I said. So we'll put like 33%. We should be able to get a ton of cargo in there. 584. Might be able to get at least 600. Yeah, we'll eat, get way more than 600, actually. So we can get like 625. Because it's a short flight, we're not going to make a whole lot of money with the tickets. That's the bad thing about that. Normal flight. Let's set uh, the type. And P-A-E-N is can I? Destination set. All right, so we'll go ahead and load it immediately. Check Show the passengers, flight. make sure we got them all. Check set. We do. Check I'm not sure what class flat. means. Oh, check set. I don't think that's probably check VIP down. or anything. I'm not really sure. By the way... We had an emergency. I was—I remember I said I couldn't... I don't know how to call it in. Maybe it was one of these, actually. It doesn't really show you. Maybe it's this one? I don't know. I thought it would sh tell me. That would be kind of helpful if you hover over it and we could say. But they're already worried because of about the weather, so... We're already kind of screwed on that, which is BS, I think. Alright. Tink selectors. Alright. Turn the battery on. Alternator. Go ahead and turn the mags on. Alright. Hit the nav. Fuel pump. Hit the primer. The left one going. that all the way up and we'll shut off that fuel pump. Alright, turn on the mags for the right side, right alternator, right fuel pump, hit the primer. Alright, that one's going, move that up, cut that fuel pump. Alright, avionics bus, pedo heat, stall heat. I'll go ahead and turn on the anti-ice as well. Let's take a look right here. Looks like it's 56, yeah, 56 miles. So very close. There are some mountains. I'm not sure how. I'm not sure exactly how high we need to get. 8,500 maybe to clear it or something. I can't remember exactly what it was saying. Anyway, check out the traffic here. Just there's no ATC. that resized I would really like to what is four this is the closest to us so it'd be nice if we could take that one it looks like that is four so we'll say that we're gonna take runway four and that we're gonna taxi to it turn that GPS there we go Go ahead and set my heading to four. All right. Hit that taxi light. Parking brake is off, and we'll go ahead and start our taxi. Over to runway four. By the way, I'm having so much fun flying up here in Alaska that I'm actually in FS passengers. Might start another series. Not a whole series like like this but uh just one about flying in alaska there's like a show on the discovery channel it used to be it's called flying alaska and i kind of wanted to do something kind of like their company where we just fly around in alaska and uh I think, I think it's the perfect time to do it it is winter which is 
I think the best time to do it, the funnest, the most challenging. So I was thinking we might do something like that. Hopefully get it started kind of soon. If I don't have a video out on it now, well, by the time you're seeing this, I should be close. Flaps are coming out. I was actually going to start, uh, start that the other day. And I was trying to use the, because you, you have to fly in a Cessna uh, to start out the way I was going to do it. So I wanted to fly, not the default Cessna because I, that's very boring, but the A2A Cessna. But apparently you can't use any ATA aircraft, A2A aircraft because uh, as soon as you load it up, it tips you right over. So I have to use a, either a different, either use the default sensor or try to do it a different way, not so hard, but uh, set up an easier company with a lot more money. We'll probably end up doing that, to be quite honest. All right, well, we're going to depart to the Hotel, north now. Hotel, so we'll hit that. Landing one, lights. Anti-collision lights. Flaps are out. And as soon as we get on the runway, I'll go ahead and uh, cut off the de-ice. Because I can't remember, but I don't think you're supposed to take off or land uh, with that on. I thought you had, might actually have to cut it off when you descend, but that doesn't totally whoa, make sense to me, depending on your altitude. Alright, so we'll turn the anti-ice off. Alright, we're ready to roll. Let's just go ahead and get on out of here. Trying to get that manifold pressure back in the green. It's very finicky, very sensitive. And she's very squirrely as well. Really wants to go to the right. 80 knots. mountains out to our left. I think if we go out straight a little bit, they actually can't tell if they come down or not. Either way, we'll be able to gain some altitude going down that way. Let me go ahead and retract the flaps. Start heading over toward... I'm going to put my nose down just a little bit so I can see. I can't looks like it does end out there. We'll uh, try to gain some altitude quick. We don't have to go too far out of our way. Looks like it's about the same over here. I think we're almost pretty much actually ready to climb over. Looks like my views here. Let's try and gain a little altitude without dropping our airspeed too much. trying to check an FS commander at the minimum safe altitude. It didn't really say much. It said 8,500 feet, but that was out uh, more towards the ocean and on the other side. Not so much where we are. So, as you can see, we're, we've got really good altitude over these mountains. Let's go ahead and cut across. No, we may not have to go up all that high. Check outside. Like, keep us. Uh, I suck at doing this one handed climb. I usually, yeah, as you can see, hit the nose up. I constantly do that. Let's go ahead and uh, bring our ultimate autopilot up here. Hit the nav. visibility real quick. I hate that. Certainly, uh, 
anti ice back on for the prop. We set our heading over here. So, what is that? 348. be there very quickly. I don't really know exactly what altitude we want to go up to. But it looks uh, from the looks of over here it should be pretty good on the track that we're going. We're only 50 miles out so we don't want to get all that high. Usually uh, we'd already be descending by now. Not sure of the range of this thing either. It says 80. But See that it takes it all the way to 160. But uh, within the 80, we should be uh, just fine because we're only what 48 miles out. So I'm thinking maybe stop at 5,500, could go up to 7,500, but as soon as we get there, probably just going to have to come right on back down. Right, just cross 4,800. I'm going to keep the taxi light on. Something just happened and our nose went straight up. Alright, 5400. We're actually coming out of the clouds now. 5500. It's a little bit clear up here. Surface de ice. There is a lot of moisture. We're only 15 miles out from being able to hit them up on the radio. If there's ATC, I believe there is. It's a fairly big airport, I do believe. I just was looking on Wikipedia. I think they got like a 700 foot runway. And it looks like it is a pretty big, uh, pretty big airport and fairly busy too. I actually thought uh, Homer. I thought. I looked at it before, but for some reason I was thinking it was out to the west, on the west coast of Alaska, but it's actually on the southern coast, really close to Kenai. I can't remember, I think it's somewhat close to Anchorage, I can't really recall. Alright, I'll go ahead and speed it up for just literally a couple minutes, because we're 43 out, so I'll be right back. Just slowed it down. It's extremely quick. It's like the, their fear is starting to drop a little. I don't know why. Actually, some of this weather looks a little worse. All right, let's go ahead and see if we got ATC up here. P A E N is what we're looking for. There's so many airstrips and everything around here. Here we go. Can I municipal? I right, so they do. Tower, full stop landing. Straight in, one left, very nice. Here we go. Set the altimeter. All right, one left. Let's uh, bring up our autopilot again. Actually, use our heading. So we'll swing out a little out to the left to get better lined up. Uh, looks like they get ILS from the other side. So I'm guessing we got nothing. 
two. So check one left here. Yeah, we got nothing. Right, that is the long runway. All right. Well, let's go ahead and start descending. About twenty-two miles out. I'd be a little freaked out. Uh, it looks like it's going to clear up here. At least until Opus re the weather. Hopefully it doesn't have to. Hopefully it just stays like this. Even if it injects it. Sweep the below the clouds. Might have to come out to the left a little bit more. Make a little bit of a straighter approach. Check the altitude of the airport, but it should be near sea level for obvious reasons. <laughs> Plus, the area that uh, I think most everything seems to have been around sea level around here. A lot of the ones we've flown to have been right on the ocean, except for what Fairbanks, I think. Fourteen miles out, coming up on thirty-five hundred feet. I want to get down a little bit quicker. Just got to watch our speed there. Trying to look out, see if we see the lights at all. See a flash. to the yellow. Pull back just a little bit. I don't want best passengers giving us, a, you know, screwing up another engine or something. Head back a little bit to the right. Alright, 2,500 feet now. We're 10 miles out. turn off the anti-ice. I'm just worried that it'll still ice up, even though we're only at, you know, 2,000 feet. Here we've got a runway right here. I'm not sure if that's us or not. Get off the thrust a lot more now. We're at 2,000 feet. sure if that was one left or not. Probably was just because of the, you can actually see it. It looked like one right is a really small runway. Yeah, that's got to be it. So we'll continue out to the right. I mean, we're at 1,500 feet. We'll go ahead and ease up on our descent. Go ahead and hold it right here. 
to get our speed down so we can get the landing gear out. Well, it feels like uh, we're a little high, so we'll keep descending very slowly. Knowledge that. I can't get my gear out. We can't really descend any quicker or else we're just going to pick up speed. Alright, gear is out. Just hit the outer marker. Hold the altitude right here. I think we're actually getting low. Too low. We've gone back too much to the right. Airport kind of changed what it looked like there for a second. Flaps coming out. Alright, looks like we're probably a little bit high now. Go ahead and turn the autopilot off. feel really stiff. Alright. Saw the flash of the lights. We are a little high. Gotta get our nose down. Cut off from the throttle a little bit. Just don't go too quick. We're up above 120 knots already. Alright, we're at full flaps now. just yet. I think, is that one right over there? Or, I don't know. I think one right is for uh, planes with skis or something. I have no idea. I was going to say water, but no, there's no water in this area. For the airport. Alright, we're right on the glide slope now. So we're trying to trim it out. Middle marker. Got off to the left here. See, it is a fairly long runway. We got thrown to the ground right there. That was weird. It was it wasn't like the ones we've had in the air hauler where we get sucked to the ground. That was more of a wind knocking you down. It was kind of crazy. Wasn't expecting any of that. All right, take it right here at the taxiway. Start hollering at us. They will. Quick. I'm always afraid they're going to ding us on that. Anti-collision lights as well. Now let's check and get our uh, progressive taxi. Very nice. Yeah, that was a weird landing. It was like we got thrown to the ground by the wind or something. It caught us too and turned us a little bit. It's going to be a little bit of a harder landing. It was, ever, it was nice coming in, nice approach, it seemed like. Right. 
by the way, this is Orb X. Like I say, I think this might actually be our last scenery up here. I'm not for totally for sure. Have to check. By the way, it's a couple days, what is today? 27th of December. I just got a new SSD for Christmas and uh, got a P prepared 3D or however you want to say prepared version 3. So that's going to be nice. Try and get that installed and uh, maybe do some flights in that. But you got to get freaking new installers for everything that has been updated. And of course, a lot of the old, a lot of my series is older stuff, and uh, they're not going to be updated, which kind of sucks. So I'll definitely be doing mostly FSX for everything. Just want to do some flights in you know P3D a little bit. I've flown it before. Uh, I think it was like the first version. I don't think I ever had 2.5 or anything. So, but it looks good. It's got good reviews from most people. So, definitely want to give it a shot. A Dash 8 down there. Alaska Airlines. Alright, guys. I'm going to cut in here. Uh, I just happened to look over at my laptop and the hop hog thing uh, decided to take a crap right then and stop recording so I had to stop it and get back in here kind of sweeping parking brake comes on go ahead and cut the fuel alright cut everything off and I think the shake hot crazy. We'll go ahead and open the door and let them out. And we'll hit these tank selectors right here. I think everything should be off. This somehow still has power. How in the world does it have power? I don't know. Battery's off. I don't know exactly how it has power. But whatever. That's uh, 76, 78% out. We'll get this thing done. Alright. They're all out. So let's go ahead and end this flight. Alright. 55 nautical miles. Time airborne 20 minutes 11 seconds. Flight time 27 minutes 9 seconds. Time on the ground 10 minutes. Average speed 166 knots. Landing speed 62.96 feet, or sorry, knots. And a landing touchdown minus 216 feet a minute. This because we got slammed down to it. Landing pitch 2.59 degrees. Landing weight 8280. Use 98 pounds of fuel. We got 290 bucks for the t uh, tickets for the passengers. 176 for the cargo. Use 58 in fuel. Eight for the airport taxes. 20 for insurance. Making this. Uh, actual income 380 bucks times 50 because it's 19,000. Add on the uh, fleet, we got uh, 25 from them, making it uh, 44 grand for the flight. Not too bad. They thought we should be 98%, although really they should have thought we were 100%. Weather is, I can't control the weather. Well, technically, I guess I could by turn off Opus or something, but oh well. Pilot bonus 230 points because we were perfect. Uh, very nice landing, plus 50, good flight, uh, satisfied passenger, plus 100, land at the uh, scheduled airport, plus 30, very bad weather condition during takeoff, but a safe landing, so plus 50 on that, minus 50 for the beacon, that's alright. We always get dinged for the beacon. So we're here at Kanai, and I don't know exactly where we're going to go next. There's towns, I, I remember from that show and other things like uh, Bethel, Gnome, Kodiak, uh, what is that, Uticleet, wherever, uh, that's actually where I wanted to actually put the base at, because that's where their uh, original base was at, I think it was Uniclet, Nolcleet, something like that, but yeah, there's different places that I uh, want to fly, uh, but I want to do some of those in the other uh, series I'm going to put up next. Pretty nice scenery, I like the Dash 8 over there. I think that's a dash eight. 
Not as many uh, static aircraft at this airport, but still looks really, really good. I think that's a Grand Caravan. I can't tell. The wings kind of look odd from up here. Overall, pretty daggone nice. And that's going to be it for this episode, everybody. I hope you all did enjoy it, and I will catch you guys on the next flight.